the outline of my talk will be introduction and goals of burns care various methods of wound management clinical experience statement of complications discussion advantage disadvantage of each methods of wound management and we'll conclude it what is the goal the of uh, burns care? moving dr bamde move the slide sir move the slide you are on third slide at present yeah yeah, yeah it's moving okay it's yes, okay. moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, okay. Uh, yes, the goal of uh, burn scare is beyond the preservation of life and function. The goal is uh, return of burn survivor as a full participant back into their communities. So burns that exceed 30% of total body surface area can be potentially fatal. It, uh, as we all know that it needs a big uh, burns team, uh, which consists of general surgeon, plastic surgeon, intensivist, anesthesiologist, Specially trained nursing and paramedical staff, infection control committee, physiotherapist, nutritionist, chest physician, pediatrician, and cardiologist, etc. Uh, coming to salvage in large surface area burn, uh, it is mainly uh, the uh, we can say it is divided into four parts. That is acute burns management, then burns wound management, and supportive treatments, and rehabilitation. My talk will be mainly restricted to burns wound management. There are various methods of uh, uh, burns wound management in large surface area wounds. Mainly, there are three modalities. The uh, modality of choice is early excision and immediate grafting for deep burns if all the things are, uh, the setup is okay and there is good backup. Then uh, next uh, method is uh, serial debridement and grafting for delayed and infected burns. And the third one is collagen or uh, silver dressings as a non-surgical approach for superficial second degree burns. Why early excision and immediate grafting should be the first choice of treatment? As Dr. Hadan has said, one of the most important advances in last 20 years has been development of early excision and early wound closure, which has changed the pathophysiology of burns injury. Hypermetabolism due to burns causes slow wound healing and prolonged generalized weakness due to loss of lean body mass. Early ex burns excision and immediate wound cover reduces hypermetabolism rapidly. That is the advantage. Another thing is the risk of serious systemic infection originating from burns wound is reduced. Like in this picture, you can see there is a, a severe wound infection, invasive wound infection, and patient is uh, going into sepsis. This can be avoided uh, if we do early excision and immediate grafting. Conventionally, uh, generally 10% of total body surface area burn wounds are excised at uh, many centers. But uh, with our experience of last uh, 22, uh, 24 years, uh, we are routinely now safely excise up to uh, 25 to 40 percent of total body surface area burn at a single stage with our uh, protocols um, for the safety of the patient and as per the uh, conditions of the patient time of excision uh, excision within 40 hours, 48 hours is the best as uh, because of uh, the edema the blood loss is less uh, but generally in our setup we have to uh, we generally go for two to three days for uh, early excision. There is no age limit. We have done excision in even one day baby and uh, in 85 year old uh, uh, person also, which I, I will share in the coming slides. So the total body surface area burn, we have uh, uh, till now restricted to 80% uh, burn. And the aim is early near total excision and prompt cover of the burn wounds. Preoperative evaluation. Depth of burn, total area of burn, percentage of burns, that is distribution of burns, airway assessment, hemodynamic parameters, fever, uh, presence of fever, urine output, this has to be assessed. Uh, biochemistry, uh, all investigation has to be done along with coagulation profile and of course, exit chest. We have to uh, secure a central line, uh, IV access uh, for um, giving transfusions and uh, IV fluid. Then we have to ensure adequacy of uh, blood products inside the OT. Uh, we have to assess about uh, inhalation lung injury, or what is the stage, whether uh, is, is it uh, fine to go for early oxygen or we should wait. Uh, we have to also assess about associated injuries and comorbidities. Associated injuries can happen in electrical burns, especially. Coming to the surgical plan of early oxygen, we have to plan number of stages and depth of oxygen as per the percentage of burns and the um, depth of uh, burns. Uh, generally, we divide the work into three teams. One team works, uh, for, does excision, another team hemostasis, third team prepares the grafts. And the total body surface area exercise routinely 25 to 35%, sometimes up to 40%, especially on extremity burns, as we can use tourniquet, so there is less blood loss. 
and we have to plan the donor sites and position of the patient uh, sometimes we have to change the position which is little risky but intraoperatively but we have to plan it beforehand intraoperative monitoring all the required blood products are kept ready in the refrigerator of operation theater uh, and uh, it can be used for the losses adequately and earlier areas to be excised under tourniquet we finish first uh, there has to be flexibility of plan of excision depending on the blood loss sometimes patient may have um, more than expected blood loss so we may have to uh, stop there or reduce the percentage of burns like that or we may have to change the area of uh, burn we have to monitor strictly urine output cvp and temperature uh, during surgery intraoperative hemogram also is a good uh, uh, guideline for uh, replacing the blood loss we closely monitor ecg nibp uh, spo2 and etco2 during surgery also prioritizing the specific burnt areas in such major burns patient is very important as this patient need a prolonged hospital admission and care specifically prioritizing the excision and grafting of areas important for cvp lines arterial lines tracheostomy site gastrostomy site and colostomy sites are very important for long term airway nutritional and supplement uh, nutrition supplement and nursing care we uh, try to uh, achieve early healing at these places uh, where we may need uh, access on the body coming to the technique uh, technique of uh, burn wound uh, excision uh, layer by layer excision of deep burn wound is done till underlying healthy bleeding viable tissue using handheld dermatome in this case you can see there is a deep burn on the hand and there is tourniquet is applied and there is sterile articulable tourniquet and i am using uh, hambi's knife uh, for excision though it looks very uh, easy uh, in the video clip but it requires uh, definitely a learning curve and good experience especially while exercising the burns on under tourniquet because the appearance of healthy tissue uh, we should understand as there is not much bleeding under tourniquet use of gullian knife for tangential excision of fingers and small patchy areas of burns uh, can be done if it is available indication for early facial excision and grafting full thickness flame or electrical burns can be excised to fascia or muscle level to make sure uh, that there is a good vascular bed uh, for uh, the widely mesh or meek micrograft which are very precious in uh, uh, large surface area burns body areas like abdomen thigh upper arm etc where subcutaneous fat is less vascular we generally go for um, uh, facial excisions coming to the technique of facial excision uh, one should prefer uh, electrocautery uh, good quality electrocautery can, can be used for facial excisions and uh, there is a paper of uh, uh, where it is stated that one should prefer fascia or muscle or fat as a graft bed of choice in individuals in whom graft loss would jeopardize survival means uh, there is very few donor site available and huge area of uh, burns here uh, every uh, centimeter millimeter of graft is important so we have to ensure good graft uh, bed which uh, fascia can give subfacial excision can give surgical steps to reduce blood loss these are very important as this is a very uh, the, there is a huge blood loss in this surgery use of autoclavable uh, silicon tourniquet is very useful for extremity excisions uh, burns excisions we do hemostasis using uh, diathermy bipropagulation adherence soak mobs topical hemostatic agent like uh, hemlock and butyrclot compression dressings and elevation rapid excision is the key surgery should be finished within 2 to 3 hours even in cases requiring 35 to 40% total body surface area uh, excision in a single stage early excision intraoperative complications there can be most important is hypothermia and excessive blood loss uh, sometimes there can be refractory shock severe bronchospasm pulmonary edema difficult intubation uh, initial phase and there can be anaphylaxis to various uh, blood products or uh, medicines so we have to uh, anesthetist has to look for that also compromised airway pulmonary insufficiency associated injuries limited vascular access frequent change of position and rapid blood loss in ra uh, short time these are the challenges for anesthesiologist uh, around uh, surgery also there is a impaired tissue perfusion decreased collateral oncotic pressure impaired temperature regulation mechanism altered drug response renal insufficiency and uh, there can be sometimes sepsis because of bacteremia of 
um, subclinical wound infection. So anesthesia has to be very alert during surgery about this. Post-op protocol, very close and intensive monitoring uh, uh, is uh, uh, needed. Vitals like urine output, uh, vitals and urine output should be kept within normal limits. Patient has to be kept warm uh, and well hydrated. Watch for excessive bleeding. Limbs are kept elevated. Nasal oxygen or sometimes we give NIV for initial eight hours. We have to give excellent analgesia. We use PCA pump. Uh, we have to ensure uh, two feeding, enteral feeding. Then David exercises should be started with six to eight hours. And we repeat hemogram after six to eight hours uh, to uh, see whether there is a need of uh, blood replacement. Challenges in salvage of large surface area burn. We have seen unfavorable outcome if we stage the wound cover procedures more than two to three times in large surface area burns uh, due to infection in during this waiting time. So in cases of large surface area burn, we may have to cover the wounds of size more than 30 to 40 percent total body surface area at a single stage in some cases now just to uh, finish the all the exigen area within two stages to avoid uh, wound infection in uh, if the exigen is delayed immediate grafting options in large surface area burn uh, autograft is the most preferred choice uh, also we can use bank allograft and live donor homograft we used to use uh, before we had the mic micrograph and the use of allograft uh, from bank may uh, skin bank may help decrease wound size which in turn can decrease the donor area needed for the uh, wound closure this is a case where we have used uh, 80 percent total body surface area uh, burns we are uh, here we have used bank uh, allograft after excision of the burns as such you don't have skin bank we mostly prefer for uh, meek micrograph that is like um, uh, autograft then coming to use of live homograft, uh, previously, this was 15 years back, we used to use uh, maternal homograft for small kids. This was a uh, one and a half year kid uh, having uh, deep burns, charring on the thigh and abdomen. We have done excision, early excision on third day, and we have used homograft uh, on that day. And after, uh, on the 16th day, we replaced the homograft with uh, autograft. And this is the um, uh, follow-up after two years. There is no contracture, good healing. This was another child, uh, immediate neonate, uh, immediate after uh, birth. He had uh, burns due to warmer, uh, all toes and fingers and abdomen and the lower extremity was burnt. We did the immediate fasciotomy. Then uh, we did excision of the early excision of all the burns on fifth day. And we covered it with uh, maternal graft, homograft uh, on ninth day. And this, this was the picture on ninth day. And on the 17th day, we grafted it with his own graft, that is autograft, and this is after complete healing and during follow-up after one year. So uh, wound cover in large surface area is a challenge, especially uh, if the area is more than 50% uh, total body surface area burns. And when there is unavailability of skin banks, cadaveric uh, or uh, xenografts, or cultured keratinocyte graft, which is not available in India. These challenges uh, we can um, deal with uh, using mesh grafting and meek grafting. I will share uh, some clinical cases about this. Our protocol for using autograft uh, for immediate wound cover. For third degree burns, generally we use 1 is to 2 mesh or meek micrograft having 1 is to 6 or 1 is to 4 expansion. Especially in children, we use 1 is to 4 expansion of meek. For deep second degree burns, uh, we use 1 is to 3 meshing or meek micrograft 1 is to 6 expansion because there is some and there may be some part of uh, dermal element remaining in the deep secondary burn for joint creases hand face and neck uh, we always use autograft sheets for cosmetic reason and functional reason as well um, this was a uh, 17 year female having uh, around 68% total body surface area burn this is the case where uh, when mesh uh, me grafting was not available we had exercise her on fourth day and uh, another uh, this was the picture on 10th day we have done 28% total body surface area uh, excision and grafting and dry collagen uh, were used as an immediate cover. Uh, this was on uh, uh, then again uh, on ninth day we exercise uh, second stage excision of remaining burns and deep burns. And this was a picture after 45th day while at the time of discharge uh, we could discharge on 45th day uh, with the help of uh, grafts and collagen. So uh, limitations for immediate wound cover in India, uh, as uh, just discussed, skin banks are uh, 
um, less in uh, India. Xenografts are not available. Integra is not affordable to our population, all the population. And uh, CEA is uh, not available in India. So answer to the challenge uh, with our experience in last 22 years, uh, we have established some protocols for using meek microopting technique in last surface area one. We have also evaluated the advantages and disadvantages of this technique as a skin graft expansion method. Uh, we have started using meek micrografting for large surface area burns in August 2007, that is 15 years. And uh, around uh, uh, 200, uh, more than 200 procedures we have done uh, using meek micrografting. Uh, age of the patient range from one year to 80 year. And uh, we have used this technique in uh, patient having 28% to 85% uh, burns area. Indications uh, of using meek micrografting, third degree burns if more than 30%. Burns of thigh, both the thighs are involved. Then limited donor sites. Then previously, if uh, previously donor sites are being used, but there is healing issues or graft rejection, and if the age is more than 60 years, even for 10% full thickness burn, we go for um, meek micrografting to avoid uh, morbidity of uh, using large area of uh, donor site. This is the machine which was uh, first devised in 1958 and then modified in 1993. It has uh, 13 parallel circular blades which cuts the graft into 14 rows. Definitely, it requires a big team. Uh, we generally uh, have three teams. Uh, uh, four to five assistants are uh, washed up for this procedure. Uh, this is a um, harvesting of uh, graft for um, MIG uh, technique. We require a very uniform thickness graft, so it is better to use dermatome. Another advantage of using dermatome is we can harvest graft from any side. You can see from the breast area, chest area, uh, from the waist, abdomen, we can harvest using this uh, dermatome. These are the different expansions. One is to three, one is to four, one is to six, and one is to nine. Generally, in practical sense, we use uh, one is to four and one is to six. One is to four for uh, kids and one is to six for adults. We never use one is to nine. Uh, it is generally used as a sandwich uh, in other countries where xenografts are available. Mm, these are the components of uh, MIG gauzes. Uh, this is a pre-folded polymide gauze. I will show you in the coming videos how it is used. This is a cork uh, plate, uh, 42 by 42 millimeter, and this is after finish, uh, doing the uh, expansion. We use at a time two pieces of uh, 42 by 42 millimeter uh, split thickness grafts, which are uh, kept on the cork, and it is run through the machine. Uh, this is how uh, the graft, two pieces of graft are cut at one time in this machine. This is one pass. Uh, then we um, turn the graft pieces 90 degree and um, uh, another pass is done. So there are 14 strips of three millimeter wide. Then again, they are cut 90 degree. So uh, at the end, we get 196 squares, 196 pieces of three by three millimeter graft uh, in this case. So once these grafts are, uh, me grafts are ready, we uh, spray meek adhesive. It is a um, uh, glue. Uh, we uh, wait for three minutes to glue to act. And then uh, this glued uh, gauze is uh, pressed against this pre-folded gauze. This pre-folded gauze has uh, a particular expansion ratio as per our uh, requirement. And uh, after waiting for another few minutes, um, and this, this, how, this is how it will look. We gently remove the cork piece uh, from the uh, pre-folded gauze. Uh, this, this is how it looks. Then this is uh, stretch on both the sides. This is the gauze is pulled uh, by traction on both the sides until the plates become unfolded and the aluminum backing is peeled off and uh, we staple the gauzes uh, on the uh, ready wound. This is how uh, this is applied. This is uh, how it looks. This was the initial uh, before expansion and this is after expansion of the graph. This is another video of showing how we use the MIG micro rafting. And this is the appearance on the sixth day of uh, MIG micro rafting. And this is the whole procedure which you have seen in the video. So, uh, coming to the meek micro uh, protocol, um, 1 is to 6 expansion is used in adult, 1 is to 4 in children. And um, uh, generally, we use 1 is to 6 expansion for freshly excised uh, wounds, that is, early excision of wounds. But for granulating wounds, we use one is to four gauzes. This is our this is with our experience. We have seen some graft losses in one is to six gauzes. If we use on 
secondary grafting that is granulating wound and area of wound cover uh, can we can cover from 20 to 40 percent at uh, one stage and as i said for joint creases neck and face we always use when is to always use uh, uh, sheet grafts or with minimal uh, slits wound preparation uh, before using meek micrografting we have to ensure that the graft bed is good it is vascular either we have to go for tangential excision or we have to go for subfacial or suprafacial excision to ensure the graft bed is good for meek micrografting and yes there is another group of patient where we can use meek micrografting for granulating healthy wounds which you will see in the clinical cases this was the case of 62% burn in a 47 year male this is a suicidal burn very deep burn so combination of tangential excision for hands and uh, subfacial excision for chest was done and uh, combination of uh, maximum meek micrograft and some areas we have used at the uh, joint creases uh, mesh uh, mesh grafts and this was the exp uh, appearance on 8th day and this was the appearance on uh, 12th day and this is after complete healing and follow up uh, this patient uh, had uh, nice healing without any contractures another case 60% deep burns in a 55 year female accidental burn very deep burns so we have excess 35% of uh, burns area on fourth day in a single stage and it covered with uh, mostly with meek micrograft and some part with uh, mesh grafts 25 meek gauges were used and patient uh, had complete healing almost on 40th day this was during follow up the picture this case again 60% burns uh, excision was done on third day and meek micrograft was used and complete healing was on there on 14th day this was a 55% uh, burns uh, again inhalation burn we assess the patient if she is fit for this procedure and this excision was done for 30% total body surface area uh, in a one go on third stage a uh, third day and this is how uh, early um, wound cover was given for her this is the picture on uh, third uh, post surgery day and this is on 14th uh, day of meek micrografting and this is after complete healing in Uh, follow up another case 50% deep uh, burns uh, we have done on fourth day 35% uh, total body surface area excision and uh, cover uh, appearance on 14th uh, day and she was discharged on 29th day uh, with complete healing this was a uh, uh, 45% uh, deep burns with inhalation lung injury again we have excess 28% total body surface area burn on third day and covered with meek micrografting with almost uh, minimum uh, contracture coming to meek micrografting used in large surface area burns in children this was a case of 55% deep burns in a 4 year male uh, on fourth day um, we excise uh, um, around 30% body surface area and we covered with meek, uh, uh, meek micrografting and um, this was the appearance on seventh day there was some loss again on 12th day uh, this was the appearance on 12th day we did uh, two sits in sittings of grafting mesh and uh, meek micrografting and on 36th day complete healing was done and there and this was and during follow up this was again child of 55% burn in a smoke inhalation injury this was suicidal burn and uh, on the fourth day we excise uh, um, uh, the wounds deep wounds and covered with uh, around 30% area was excised and we covered with uh, combination of mesh meek and collagen and this is the uh, same patient after 5 years of uh, follow up so um, as i said meek micrografting can be used in a granulating wounds also secondarily and this was a child this the clinical case 35% burns came to us in septicemia uh, after serial debridement after one month there was good granulation tissue so we covered it with meek micrografting this was a, a appearance after 6 months this was appearance after 5 months and this was appearance after 9 years of uh, meek um, this is uh, the slide is to show how how will be the scar it is just like uh, another um, uh, mesh uh, my, uh, grafting the scars of uh, meek micrografting are similar there is no any contracture even um, after so many years coming to 70% burns with this, um, which is um, uh, managed with serial excision and debridement again we have um, covered her with uh, meek micrografting and some part with mesh micro, uh, mesh grafts this was a anc 4 month anc a 29 year male uh, female accidental burn uh, uh, some inhalation lung injury also she had uh, hence we did uh, serial debridements and um, uh, we um, managed her on 31st day with meek micrografting mostly and this is after healing this was a 11 year child having 60% burn with inhalation lung injury we could not do early excision on him so serial debridement were done 
and manage uh, with uh, on 26th day we did uh, um, uh, meek micro rafting and mesh uh, mesh rafting this is another child 55% electric burn 13 year old male uh, this was uh, quite deep burns so majority of the burns uh, some of the burns uh, healed and remaining burns we managed with the uh, uh, combination of mesh and meek micro rafting mm -hmm. and this was after healing of the patient uh, almost no contractures this child had uh, deep immersion burn um, uh, the attention uh, there was no in, nobody to attend the child for long so the burns were very deep though it was uh, uh, due to hot liquid uh, the burns were very deep and um, a patient was in shock for uh, two three days so we managed him uh, for uh, with the uh, uh, serial debridements and meek micro rafting um, on 38 day for coverage of this huge area of burns and this is after healing 20, 20, on 36 day we could discharge him this was a gynecologist lady uh, having uh, burns on both the legs both the um, lower extremities uh, this was accidental burn and uh, she came in this uh, phase infected uh, wounds so we wait uh, till the granulation tissue was good on 30th day, we did uh, micro grafting as the donor areas, main donor areas were involved. So combination of mesh and meek grafting we did. And uh, now she's uh, doing well. She's back to her uh, uh, surgical practice. Uh, this is the case to illustrate that in an 80 year old uh, lady uh, having so many complications like hypothyroidism, renal failure, cardiac failure, um, she had deep burns. Uh, and this area was uh, definitely for her um, uh, quite morbid. So uh, the surgeon said uh, the disciples were reluctant for grafting. So they, she was sent to me. And though the area was not much, uh, as she had so many morbidities and 80 years old, I uh, took the decision for going for um, uh, meek grafting as we have to use very small donor area in such cases. And there was complete healing with a very small donor area in uh, such an old lady. Coming to meek micro rafting use in a very complicated uh, burns cases where due to biofuel, sometimes you will see uh, donor side getting infected and getting deep uh, wounds. Also, in the grafted areas, uh, most of the grafted areas, there was graft loss. There were seven sittings of uh, grafting done for her. And she was a daughter of a senior surgeon uh, from a district place. So only uh, donor area remaining was buttocks and back. Uh, we harvested the graft from there and we covered her with uh, Big micro grafting, and this is after healing. This was uh, done after seven and a half months of uh, her burns. Uh, she came to us uh, very late with all these biofilms and all. Uh, coming to hand uh, burns, uh, uh, generally in all large surface area burns, uh, hand burns are very common. My intention of including hand burns is all the major burns, that is large surface area burns, generally have hand burns, and we should not neglect hand burns uh, in the um, process of uh, uh, salvaging the patient as uh, this is a very important uh, part of organ of our body which needs uh, attention for uh, further good quality of life this was the case where we have done early excision and grafting and this is the result and uh, this follow up three months such results uh, are um, very um, difficult to get uh, if we do secondary grafting um, delayed uh, excision and uh, in case this was again another case uh, uh, major burn 60 percent burn and uh, this was done uh, along with excision of other body part and he had reasonable hand function another case combination of chemical and flame burn in a severely um, uh, um, lung injury and bilateral hand burn again we have done early excision uh, of other parts along with that hands were also done and this is the function in hand so we have to be careful uh, to handle hand burns. We have to treat it early, aggressively, adequately, and skillfully for the best functional outcome. Coming to uh, conservative management of large surface area burn, uh, collagen dressings for second degree scars and burn. Uh, you all know the advantages of collagen dressing that decrease of uh, decreasing pain of the burn wound, less frequent dressing changes, prevention of infection, prevention of protein and heat loss, and there is a faster repetition. This is we use for superficial second degree burn. This was a case uh, where uh, we have used collagen, it was 40% burn, and the child uh, healing was done in uh, almost 14 days. Another case, uh, this uh, delay, the patient came a little late, but still we use 55% burn, we use uh, collagen dressing, and only penile area needed uh, grafting because it was a little uh, deep. 
otherwise all the area healed in uh, 30 days uh, this was a huge area of burn that uh, last surface area burn uh, due to hot uh, uh, hot liquids uh, 72% scars in this adult um he was quite healthy and with only with collagen dressing there was complete healing in within 15 to 20 days coming to example of uh, ten toxic pupillary necrolysis which has very high mort mortality and uh, being a burn center we manage these cases also we have to treat them like scalds with collagen dressing and fluid resuscitation this was the child of a um, uh, radiologist friend in our city having uh, involving almost all the body area but we treated him like uh, scald as i said collagen dressing and fluid resuscitation with the help of a pediatric team uh, from our uh, nearby sanjuni hospital we could salvage this baby uh, this um, boy uh, with continuity management then um, uh, some uh, slides about silver dressings in last surface area burn uh, generally for uh, um, if the wounds are uh, uh, second degree superficial or second degree deep uh, we go for uh, silver dressings Uh, and we found good experience with silver dressings this was 56% burn and this was first dress, second dress in dressing change for uh, third dressing change and uh, every third day we have to change the dressing and in uh, on 21st day there was a, a, a good healing and this was a cosmetic appearance after 3 years patient visited to us uh, after use of this thing this uh, was a horrible looking 45% uh, uh, burns uh, due to uh, some electrical short circuit and after cleaning uh, under ga we found that we can cover him uh, instead of going for early excision we can cover with uh, uh, face for collagen dressing and rest area we did silver dressing and after three dressing changes there was good epithelialization when there is a good epithelialization we stop using uh, su such silver dressing and almost uh, most of the area uh, was healed with uh, silver dressing only small areas uh, where there were some facial tummy wounds uh, we had to do grafting and this is how he, he, he look on 14th day day 1 uh, day 3 and this is after discharge also there are flexible uh, silver dressings available which acts for 7 days um, just like 3 uh, days uh, silver dressings advantages of silver dressings uh, these dressings reduces the risk of infection it contributes to effective wound bed preparation and helps to maintain moist wound environment to assist in rapid healing in case of uh, deep second degree burns and there is a reduced frequency of dressing changes which which can be cost effective and beneficial to the patient coming to the wound management in large surface area burns outcome average area of excised burn tissue in a single stage in our hospital was 28% maximum area excised in a single stage was 40% and initial eval um, the important things are initial evaluation of depth of burn is very important to evaluate the needs of early excision and grafting earlier functional recovery due to early excision and grafting boosts the confidence of patient for further burns management and rehabilitation program so early mega excision of burns wounds have shown significant benefit like decrease in hospital stay lesser complications like sepsis ards decrease in the mortality and morbidity in extensive burns patient meek macrografting technique is very useful for skin graft expansion in large surface area burn the instruments and technique of meek macrografting may um, appear complex initially but with uh, certain protocols and uh, planning pre operative planning and training of the staff we can uh, reduce the time spent for doing meek macrografting and skin harvesting with the uh, dermatome uh, is uh, better for better uniformity in such uh, uh, macrografting cases number of painful dressing changes and repeated debridements are reduced uh, with the use of uh, macrografting Uh, very small air donor area is uh, required as you have seen the graft islands are very close together in a regular pattern resulting in fast and uniform epithelialization generally epithelialization occurs in 12 to 16 days and the actual expansion ratio is uh, theoretically equal to uh, the um, mentioned ratio it is not like a mesh mesh where there can be 1 to 3 expansion but uh, in practical there can be 1 to 2 uh, uh, expansion of the uh, graft Uh, but here uh, whatever is mentioned there is a same uh, uh, expansion is achieved so overall patient survival improved uh, using early excision uh, in patients where um, uh, there is more than 50% total body surface area burn because of faster epithelialization overall graft take uh, in early excision was 85 to 90% less incidence of contractures and decrease overall morbidity and uh, there is definitely num less number of uh, surgical interventions are required 
uh, because of use of meek uh, expansion technique so again uh, donor side morbidity is decreased hospital stay is reduced so overall cost of treatment may reduce and functional and aesthetic outcomes of wounds treated with uh, meek grafts are satisfactory coming to conventional method uh, there are some disadvantages like serial debridement and uh, grafting there is higher chance of invasive infections and wound sepsis till we cover the wound uh, there are multiple uh, painful repeated dressings changes needed uh, it needs more number of surgeries more frequent uh, and severe contractures compared to early excision prolonged hospital stay and ultimately it can be costly and uh, there is a little increased mortality and morbidity in such cases so in conclusion early excision and grafting is more beneficial and economical method of treatment in large surface area burn it significantly improves survival of large surface area burn also the functional and cosmetic results are better so extensive burn should be treated early aggressively adequately and skillfully for the best outcome to achieve our goal i, I will again repeat the goal beyond the preservation of life and function ultimate goal is return of burn survivor as a full participant back into community the same child in the new net i was called for the third ceremony as um, they, they were thankful for us for taking care of the baby at the time of burns and this is another complex uh, case uh, daughter of a surgeon who had seven and a half months of agony of uh, multiple wounds with biofilm which we could help with uh, um, my um, this me crafting so uh, the future of burns management inhalation lung injury is still a challenge lung transplantation uh, may be helpful in endosteal pulmonary failure and we still uh, need to have a better understanding of pathophysiology of contractures hypertrophic scars and its modulation uh, as you know the burns procedures are long intense and perform under physically and emotional stressful conditions hence we need a big and very spirited team thank you for the hearing and all the questions are welcome thank you uh, dr bemde uh, uh, yes sir have you any experience with the cadaveric skin graft uh, yes sir. very few cases i have done only three cases uh, okay. cadaveric uh, uh, but the experience was not that good all the patients which uh, we use were uh, more than 70% burn and uh, uh, they were all I means there, there was mortality of uh, in all the three cases there were also graft rejection um, um, uh, this thing uh, manifestations in uh, two two of the cases which were quite uh, uh, severe that is our observation oh. we don't have skin banks so, but we have used for three oh. uh, in three cases oh. being uh, having a meek micro we prefer autograft and we are oh. using this use on seven so we are happy uh, with this but yes allograft is also a uh, uh, very good uh, option for uh, coverage after early excision so what is uh, going to be the cost of meek micrografting at your center it is private uh, center or government yeah, yeah it is a private center fully private uh, the gauze one uh, gauze cost uh, 14000 uh, 1400 rupees Yeah. and one session of grafting uh, patient the patient uh, disposable expenses are around 60 to 70000 disposables and the surgical charges and anesthesia charges are similar 60 to 70000 so have you compared any time uh, with the conservative management cost and uh, this meek grafting yeah, yeah. cost yeah definitely we have uh, seen it since almost 14 years we are using both the techniques uh, in those cases uh, where Uh, patient is not willing for meek micro grafting because of the cost of disposables we have done uh, mesh grafting that is multiple mesh graftings we have measured also but ultimately the cost of uh, uh, treatment uh, may be more in conservative treatment or may be equal because the number of uh, surgeries will be more and the hospital stay will be more uh, also there are indirect expenses where patients attendant had to stay with the patient for long say um, in many of the cases i have shown the patient can be discharged on 35th to 50th day 35th oh. to 50th day discharge in a major burn more than 50% burn uh, is uh, quite fast those cases where uh, we have not done early excision the uh, treatment goes longer the hospital stay is uh, stays longer so cost of hospitalization cost cost of medicines cost of uh, antibody particularly they become resistant we have seen such, such patient generally require cholestine meropenem 
uh, antibody for prolonged period. And uh, what is your experience with the after effect of this much grafting and uh, quality of life of the patient? Uh, yes, patient has to be very motivated uh, because these are last surface area burns. There and is the precautions patient has to take throughout the life. Um, uh, this graft is similar to uh, mesh graft. I mean, there yeah. is no difference. Actually, there was a, one more video about quality of skin uh, pinching, uh, but that didn't uh, um, uh, work in this presentation. The quality of uh, skin, the quality of scar in mesh and make graft is same. Uh, okay. So there is no uh, something extra care has needed uh, for the meek micro grafting. And we have to uh, take the same precautions like pressure garments, silicone gel sheets, wherever needed small area there, like uh, we have to inject uh, kinocot uh, injections for hypertrophy. Uh, yeah. And then moisturizer, a lot of moisturizer, sunscreen lotions, splintage, of course, they are also needed. Okay. And once you do this uh, one is to six expansion, huh. do you need to cover it by some skin substitute or uh, uh, no sir uh, okay. one is to six is fine one is to nine needs uh, sandwich graft uh, needs uh, cadaver or xenograft hence yeah. we we are never used one is to uh, nine see one is to six doesn't need anything. used at our place because of many reasons religious and uh, uh, ethnic yeah, reasons. Yeah. but uh, i think one is to six is also quite large expansion but surprisingly, it doesn't need uh, any uh, secondary cover. Okay. It may look like that, but um, uh, the uh, the islands are equally placed. So there is a good migration of uh, epithelium in between As, the islands. Uh, so because uh, there is, it has always been told and taught that uh, epithelial migration from the edge of that graph is 0.5 centimeter at most from one side. So at, at most, you can leave the gap of one centimeter. So the gas is, gap, gap is very less, no, sir, here. Gap is very, very less. In it one is, is to six, how much is the gap? Um, I don't know the measurement, but it is less than uh, one centimeter. Millimeter. It okay. must be in millimeters, yeah. few millimeters. Four, four, few four, millimeter. four millimeters. It is a standard I think it is more than centimeters at least but less than one centimeter of course yeah yeah definitely less than one centimeter it must be a few millimeter uh, yeah. and uh, surprisingly as you said initially I, I had apprehension of using one is to six uh, because mm -hmm. the training is same with all of us that we have yeah. to give maximum graft to prevent yeah. scarring and contracture so yeah. um, we were reluctant to use one is to six we used to use one is to four initially but uh, uh, as our confidence uh, gain with experience, in adult we use one is to six, and in children we use one is to four. And have you observed cobblestone appearance after this one is to six machine? Yeah, yeah, there, there is a typical uh, scarring is there. You might have seen in this uh, uh, scars also. There is de definitely there is scarring, um, cobblestone scarring. But uh, I have shown one girl. A small girl yeah. where we have done 11 years, uh, nine years of uh, uh, this thing. I think now she is 11 years after the grafting, big micro grafting. And the appearance of, uh, surprisingly, the appearance is similar to mesh graft because I use both the types of graft for her. And it is very difficult to compare uh, where was the meek um, micro graft and where was the mesh graft. I have to see in the... I have uh, some experience with mesh graft and this uh, meat graft uh -huh. uh, to avoid this cobblestone or crocodile skin appearance. Uh -huh. I cannot explain what was the reason, but I used after three to four weeks uh -huh. some steroids for okay. a month or two. Uh -huh. And then I found that oh, uh, this appearance is less. I don't know about other six was it topical or oral? Oral steroid or topical? Topical, topical not oral. Topical. Topical. Okay, topical steroid. Topical, okay. Topical. For small area, we can uh, definitely try. Small I area. used Betnovet exactly. Okay, sir. And uh, I Betnovet. found that uh, this appearance, uh, I have few photographs with me somewhere. Okay, and uh, I experienced that. Uh -huh. As such, topical steroid helps for... Uh, 
any um, um, uh, scars I can even only even scars. it might have enhanced something epithelialization or whatever uh, till the time that uh, graft uh, epithelialization was more by that time the expanded is when, was when did you applied the uh, steroid sir at what phase after 3 weeks to 4 days uh, after 3 weeks of uh, mig micrografting uh, we can uh, expanded uh, mesh grafting also once it has taken over well we okay. removed the dressing then uh -huh. we applied that. okay definitely we can try in some cases sir. Definitely. Uh, i you. think so we can try and we can study yes sir. i don't have any explanation frankly uh -huh. but i have observed i it is my observation uh -huh. uh, seniors may it is matters more it yeah. adds to the Experience matters more. If it is there, we should try, and we yes. should come out. Ah, with the that's results. why I am sharing my experience. Uh, that right, if uh, we try and we find the, it is beneficial, we can go for uh, some study or like that. Uh -huh. Dr. Bhattacharya may comment. Sir, uh, no, I have no experience about using steroid uh, postoperatively because we have been using the. Mesh graft routinely, and yeah. uh, most of the time it was one is to four. So okay. uh, because uh, you know, it, graft, it, no mesh graft. Mesh, mesh graft, sir. Mesh. Yes, and uh, uh, because uh, it depends upon the case. But yeah. uh, what I what I wanted to say is that uh, Dr. Ramakant, it was a thrilling presentation. Hearty congratulations and Thank for you, the, your experience, vast experience. The only yes. thing which I wanted to say is that with this MIG graft, uh -huh. now it it seems that the use of homograft has reduced. Yes, we are not used exactly. since last 12 years. Exactly. Th that was the case when we didn't have a MIG micrograph. Yeah. And the second thing is that even if you have to, our experience was that those days uh, the homograft came in the view and uh, it was easy to motivate the, especially the mother. In, in fact, the spontaneously she used to come that use my skin for my yeah. child. Yes. Yeah. It, it was not difficult to motivate the mother for a small child, but yes. it was most difficult to motivate for adult patients. Adults. Yes, sir. True. Okay. Especially so, for uh, female. Yeah, especially for female. So this was another thing. And yes. the one thing which I wanted to ask you is that, uh, does your protocol change according to the causative agent of the burn? For example, chemical burn, electrical burn, thermal burn. Uh, yes, sir. Change with the yes, sir, of course. For early excision and uh, make. Yes, sir. Definitely. Well, we cannot do the same thing with uh, electrical burn or uh, chemical burn. We have to wait till uh, the injury pattern uh, is established. So it is Especially not early, it is, it is delayed. Delayed, yes, sir. It is delayed, excellent. Yeah. And one suggestion is that we don't know the depth of the burn in the electrical initially. Yes. We have to wait because yes. it is more deeper than what it seems. Yes, always it gives you surprises. That's limited role. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, my suggestion, Dr. Bemde, is that. You have uh, written in your slide that after 48 hours, I go for tangential excision. Mm -hmm. I would like to add that once the patient is hemodynamically stable, stable. as early as possible, you go for that. Yes, Instead yes. of saying that after 48 hours, because that becomes fixed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your patient. Yeah, actually what happens, sir? Uh, we are being a tertiary center. Uh, some patients come directly to us. Those who right. come to the right to us, uh, we do after 48 hours only. Uh, 48 hours, we stabilize them uh, and uh, we have to prepare for the uh, consult to the patient. It is not, uh, it is a private center. Uh, it, uh, in NHS and all, they do on 24 hours also uh, in uh, European or American countries. Here, uh, the pa we have to convince to the patient that uh, we are doing surgery because most yeah. of them don't know that surgery can be done after uh, second or third day on burn. They will ask what is the uh, role of surgery and all. So it takes at least 40 hours. And those patients who come little late, come after 24 to 40 hours, then uh, we may have to wait for another day to stabilize, assess uh, the patient, and also convince the relatives. So 
uh, as early as possible is around 40 tasks or three days in our center. Okay. And sometimes four days, depending patient comes late, then okay. sometimes we are done on four days also, yes. provided there is no any wound infection on that. And patient yes. is stable. There is no sepsis or like that. Okay. Remember, I want to ask one thing. Uh, what is the protocol of starting? Which areas you will... Tourniquet area with? first. Estimate is first, sir. Extremities first. Uh, we do uh, upper extremities first under tourniquet. We have silicon tourniquet, autoclavals tourniquet. Then uh, we elevate the limbs after excision. We, then if there are lower extremities, we go to lower extremities. And because we cannot apply tourniquet to all the extremities at the time. And uh, generally we avoid on back because back burns we are seeing generally they heal because of uh, thick uh, area of uh, uh, skin. Thick is ha, ha. Heal. Ha. And uh, then I, of course we see that uh, if IV access, we need CVP access, we uh, areas of neck or groin where we need to put CVP, uh, we concentrate on that areas. Yes. Dr. Ben what, ben. what is your experience about the face? Your experience about the face? Because face, face there is a two yeah. protocol. Some pay, uh -huh. yes, we go for some pay that they resist. Uh, from only, the sir, uh, in last 24 years, we uh, as I remember, I have done only in three cases uh, tangential excision of face. It was very charred face. It was suicidal burn. Right. She poured the kerosene yes, and um, uh, nobody was there to attend her. And there was total charring of the skin. I still remember her. Uh, um, I mean, so these cases. So see, uh, only three cases we have done uh, tangential excision on face. Otherwise, uh, on and face, outcome? like like on back, outcome? outcome. Yes, uh, uh, we could uh, heal the wounds well uh, earlier, and uh, maceration and nursing care. I mean, maceration was less, nursing care was uh, better. But uh, cosmetic results uh, are definitely are not that good. Cosmetic is also not that because there is loss of fat and all. Uh, Dr. Bemde. What about sir using tannic acid? Are you using yeah, we, acid? All routine? the cases. We all we do uh, use uh, tannic acid in all the cases half an hour before shifting the patient to OT. And you, give, I, you are giving intravenous. Yeah, we are giving intravenous and we also use a topical uh, hemlock solution. And uh, that ha, hemlock, hemlock solution, then butrocolor solution, that uh, 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 frame acid, in, uh, what is that? Frisilim, frisilim uh, sol solution. That is also good. That forms a gel on the uh, oozing surface. That is also good. And uh, post op also, we give transamic acid uh, after two hours. We give two doses, pre op and post op. Yes, sir. Every two hours you give transamacid, sir. No, no, two, two doses before surgery, uh, two ampules, and two hours after finishing surgery, two ampules. Okay, you don't give it as a routine for six hourly for three days or like that. No, you no, no, only, no. Two only two doses, only two doses. Okay. Uh, right, so yes. And uh, locally, you give bottle uh, clot. Uh, uh, yes, sir. You huh. locally you give water clot and framexin, whatever talk. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Locally, hemlock solution is mostly that comes in 100 ml bottle that is very cheap that 100 ml bottle so we use extensively we pour it on excise wounds yes sir and, sir. and as such before exercising yes sir before exercising at least solution at least huh? solution in no no we use solution. for extremities we use tourniquet for extremities and uh, for abdomen and chest only we use uh, infiltration with the halogen Okay, not on the yes. limbs you need infiltration. No, 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 not on limbs. There is no need. Okay. Yes, sir. What you are uh, It is said that when you are using tourniquet, it is difficult to assess the correct. Uh, initially, initially, I, it was just a warning to the beginners that initially okay. it is difficult to assess. So you need uh, tra trained uh, eyes for that. Have that when you are using tourniquet and when you have not used tourniquet, there is any different to assess the viable layer? Definitely under without tourniquet, it is not possible to exercise such huge areas. And um, uh, in presence of uh, blood, it is difficult to assess the uh, wounds. So the quality, then, of, uh, okay. quality of bed is not uh, good without uh, tourniquet. 
Correctly assess the virus. Yeah, yeah. We again assess. Sometimes it happens, as you uh, had doubt. Sometimes if we feel that some area there is a brownish uh, part is there, or there is a fat which is no, not looking healthy, then we again exercise either with scissor or we exercise uh, this use uh, this gullen knife for uh, small area. Do you uh, release tourniquet in between to assess sometimes? No. Once we release the tourniquet, then we don't reapply again. What we do, we release under uh, we uh, do excision under tourniquet. Then we do compression dressing, crepe bandaging, and elevation of the limb. Then we don't look to that for seven minutes, seven to ten minutes. We go to another area. We go to another area. Then after ten minutes, another another team comes and they open, they soak it with the saline and all. Gently they remove uh, a small small area. They open. And there are quarteries, uh, bipolar quarteri, coagulation, uh, diathermy is done. Um, that is how uh, uh, the hemostasis is achieved. What, if I remember correctly, what is said, you you can correct me. Under the tourniquet, white is right. If it is white is right. Yeah, yeah. Pearly, without... uh, ha, pearly white, shiny white is right. Pearly yes. White is right. Under the tourniquet, right, white is right, and without tourniquet, red is good. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. remembered like that. Red is yeah. good if without tourniquet, abdomen you are doing or whatever face yes, you are yes. doing. Red is yes. good and with tourniquet, white is right. Yes, yes, yes. Very easy it to remember. <laughs> it was really enlightening. A wonderful really and uh, fantastic uh, uh, practical experience you showed and. Uh, very nicely you described the meek micrograft um, i think uh, very few centers use this uh, meek micrografting and uh, wonderful experience and the results you have showed so most of the questions dr srivastava sir and uh, 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 asked and those doubts were cleared so for the sake of uh, pg sir uh, just you explain the uh, bed nature clinically. How will you will uh, identify the viable uh, bed? How to describe? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Under tourniquet, uh, the tissue has to be uh, glistening, shining tissue, and uh, uh, whitish tissue, pearly white. It should not be brown. If it is brown, then it is charred. Then there should not be thrombos uh, veins. In the excise bed, if there are thrombose veins, then we have to again go a little deeper, one more uh, um, uh, stage of uh, yeah. excision is needed. That is under tourniquet. And uh, of course, so uh, pearly white uh, dermis with uh, protruding uh, fat packets. Fat, fat. Yeah. You want the fat, with, uh, fat should good also appearance. Look good appearance. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, it okay. should be healthy. Typical, we uh, means uh, sometimes it's difficult to express by words, but we can with the trained eyes we can uh, know the um, shiny fat globules which are viable. And those browny, dull-looking uh, fat globules we can definitely um, uh, debride again. Uh, yeah, have you uh, ever used the methylene globe in initial stages of uh, this tangential excision uh, uh, for no identifying the? Uh, a viable layer and uh, ma'am uh, i want to but i have no experience of uh, i have no experience of uh, using methylene okay. blue yeah okay, okay. and uh, you have done uh, the extensive areas in two stages uh, yeah. so in stage 1 certain areas you have uh, selected and uh, stage 2 the other areas so yeah. in stage 1 you feel that uh, the extra extremities under tonic yeah. and uh, 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 second stage, you prefer to do which areas? Re remaining area, like the abdomen, trunk, abdomen, chest. And so gap between uh, the two. that uh, time period, what is the gap you are uh, maintaining between stage one and stage two? Generally, uh, more than four to five days. Four to we five stabilize days. The, four and, to, uh, we have to stabilize. That, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes nine, ten days also, ma'am. Sometimes. Okay. Depending so, on the patient's so, condition and stabilization. Huh? Okay, that uh, that period uh, will you cover those areas with uh, uh, collagen? Collagen, yeah, yeah, collagen okay. or uh, silver dressing we cover. So after the make graft application, uh, you usually 
cover with the vaseline and uh, followed by the saline dressing and uh, only vaseline we don't use saline dressing uh, we okay. paraffin gauzes we use and on um, that dry dry uh, gamji we use dry gauze pieces uh -huh. and pads yeah. pads and yeah. when will you uh, do the dressing uh, generally on fourth or fifth day we do a first dressing first dressing uh, under general anesthesia general again? anesthesia yeah at least okay. two dressings we do under general anesthesia fourth day and eighth day on eighth day we remove the staples we remove the staples and okay. sometimes uh, some of the meek gauzes if they are uh, um, loose we remove the meek gauzes on eighth day or uh, if they are uh, still stuck up we wait till twelfth day and by twelfth day all the meek gauzes are removed means 50 so percent you, are removed. Uh, you apply these uh, meek islands along with the gauze piece and yes, over that gauze. vaseline you will put yes yes ma'am yes perfect. okay okay you will yeah. staple that meek gauzes to the bed yes ma'am is it staple yeah. Okay, okay yeah yeah, yeah. And you apply the crepe bandage, and even the first dressing you do the same way. The meek gauzes you remove, and vaseline and uh, dry gauze pieces. Dry ganji we use directly. Uh, ganji, ganji again. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So how many dressings uh, 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 need to be done for the complete healing in your experience? Four dressings. Four dressings. Four. And the uh, is the gap between the dressings you increase. Uh, uh, after second to third, third to fourth, or the same four days you will maintain? Same four days, ma'am. Four days, so we have totally to see. 16 days ha. to... Ha. Uh, on, on 16 day, we may keep some of the wounds open. Means three okay. dressings are um, uh, closed dressings. And fourth okay. dressing, if there is a good healing, dry wounds, then we keep it open. Okay. And one more important uh, question I want to ask. Uh, how will you estimate the blood requirement uh, depending upon the surface of the excision and the MIG grafting? Uh, generally, uh, as we any... use, yeah, yeah, there is a thumb rule which we have, with experience, we have this thing. For yes, upper sir. extremity, uh, for each upper extremity, we give at least one blood. One PCV, okay. one PCV and two FFP. Our ratio is one PCV, two FFP for each upper limb. For each lower limb, two uh, PCVs and four FFP. And for abdominal chest, again, uh, two to three PCV and FFP. So you, we use a lot of uh, uh, blood transfusion and means including PCV and FFP. So you uh, uh, like uh, how will you uh, give so this? Uh, blood bank. Hi, we have uh, two blood bank attached with us, and they have quite good stock. They so have, if you we, have done. That. Uh, two can... upper extremities and one lower extremities. The estimated thing four. you will distribute four. in uh, uh, four PCV and uh, eight FFP. So two upper extremities. Uh, so each will have one the... one PCV and yeah, one yeah. lower so extremity. Same day yeah. or uh, uh, same day. Same day. We give same last six. Yeah, same day we transfuse. Sometimes we transfuse ten PCVs, ten uh, FFPs with the last six. Oh. Uh, we give elastic or diet or in between. Lot of uh, transfusions are needed, ma'am, in mega excision. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that's very, very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have to ensure that these products are available beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and what any more questions? Any monitoring, invasive monitoring you are doing for such patients? Uh, post a CVP monitoring is for every patient in our hospital, in our burn center, for, for all major burns. And IBP monitoring we do, IB, IBP monitoring, invasive arterial monitoring we do if uh, burns is more than 60% generally. Initial okay. phase, we keep arterial monitoring. Once patient is stabilized, say uh, um, uh, the procedures are done, then 15, after 15 days we remove IBP. But CVP is always there till patient is almost uh, near discharge. Yeah, IBP uh, monitoring is very, days. very important because see, we cannot apply um, NIBP. So uh, we have to, yeah, there is a problem uh, to palpating the pulse also. So in that case, uh, the arterial monitoring is very helpful. Only answer. Yeah. yeah.
Dr. Memde, after how many dressings you remove that uh, meat, uh, that uh, gauze piece? Gauze. Uh, on eighth day or twelfth day? Fifty percent gauzes are generally removed on eighth day, and remaining okay. uh, on twelfth day. So you'll decide uh, if they are lifting up uh, easily. You will remove. Yes, 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 yes. On eighth day, almost fifty percent uh, get uh, loosened. That is our experience. So okay. we remove them. And twelfth uh, day, almost all are loose. If some are stuck up with the underlying some clot or secretions, we apply um, uh, silver sulfide as an ointment. Wait for uh, seven eight minutes, and it uh, gets loosened, and then we remove it. Okay. Then you use uh, non-adhesive dressing. Yes, yes, we use uh, bactigrass. Bactigrass. Along uh, with some local. Uh, Antibiotics. No, 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We had a very uh, uh, fruitful discussion uh, with uh, all the senior faculty, Dr. Srivatsava, sir, yes, yes. and uh, Bhattacharya, sir, and uh, your uh, uh, vast experience in uh, uh, meek micrograft. Uh, thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, Dr. Krishnamurthy, sir, Farooq, and all of you contributed so nicely and made this uh, session successful and it will remain a iconic uh, lecture and uh, program i thank uh, one and all uh, for this uh, active participation thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you much. thank you, thank you dr umar thank you sir thank you, you, you bhattacharya sir thank you krishnamurthy sir thank and you all thank you.